welcome to On Call After Hours, where we answer the questions we weren't able to get to during the broadcast portion of our show. All of your questions are important to us, so we want to answer as many as we can for you. So let's start, and we'll throw them back and forth. Uh, here's from Sioux Falls, a 60-year-old person. Uh, wasn't the VA the first to use electronic medical records? It is very astute. Yes, in 1997, I believe, we came up with our CPRS, Computerized Patient Record System, and it's ex it's it's good. And it's some excellent. people say that everybody should have fallen suit yes. and and just gotten free. It was available it was free. for free. There you go. So you why should've. why didn't we do that, Mike? You know, it would have been a great idea because then we would have solved the problem of how to communicate with each other. And, you know, that system was really built by the people who used it, which is the reason that it got quickly known as the best medical record system out there because there was so much feedback from the users. It served the patient's needs. Yeah, and unfortunately, the people who made the medical record I'm using <laughs> are not practicing. <laughs> I'm sure they're not. I mean, you know, it's it, we it's don't let's not get started. But I'm proud of the VA. <laughs> My husband received a letter on October 9th, 2014, to make a follow-up appointment with his primary doctor at VA Hot Springs. As soon as the appointment he could make was December 22nd, which is, by the way, I might say about the length of time or quicker than they can get in to see me. He does have good care there, but never has been able to get an appointment in a week and has at times ended up in the emergency clinic. That's, yeah, that's a bummer. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know their staffing. I what don't. they do in my clinic is they go, they have a, a walk-in clinic yeah. open at all time. Do you not have a walk-in clinic open at all time? We, we don't in Sioux Falls have a walk-in clinic at this time. We have, we, of course, the emergency room for appropriate emergencies. Um, but we really just communicate, um, communicate with your primary care team. Maybe he just needs a phone appointment. Maybe he needs an appointment with a nurse, a registered nurse, because they are very well trained and they do a lot of case management. Um, and there's other ways to get appointments. You can have an appointment with a pharmacist, maybe if it's for diabetes meds or your Coumadin adjustment. Okay. Mike, any comments? Yeah, you can also do email communication with your docs now. We've got this secure messaging, you know, component. So if you're computer savvy at all, you know, just get online and communicate that way. You can do telemedicine appointments. There's a really cool, you know, technology that VA will come and put in your home and you can communicate with your provider team that way without having to even travel. So, so no. there's other options. How do they, how do they get started on that? Well, they come in and talk to their primary care provider. Um, there's a telehealth nurse at most VA facilities that will set them up for what they need. Sometimes it's as simple as, you know, push the button when you take your medicine, if it's a critical medicine. And then we have a nurse at the VA who watches the computer and sees, you know, 150 people who are supposed to take their medicines. And if somebody doesn't, then we call them and try and get to them before they come to the emergency room. Compliance. So there's lots of options. Yeah. Lots of options. Watertown, uh, South Dakota, uh, why not just give veterans a special card to allow them to go wherever they would like, like in the private care world? Well, there is this card that's coming out that um, if you need to access care sooner than uh, 30 days or it, whatever, you know, it is. whatever it is, um, I, I can't answer that. That's a financial piece, and it's a, another a, a, story. It's you're, another you're, story. You're involved with blood I'm, pressure and yes. heart pr trouble, not the the yeah, payment. Yeah, I'm part. not an administrator. But uh, Mike might answer. Well, I think the you know the U.S. is keeping the promise to our soldiers, sons and daughters, and fathers and uncles, and grandmothers. You know, in some cases, that you know we'll take care of them. And I think the VA system is the realization of that. The best studies that have been done on the finance that I know of, um, you know, and it's hard to do studies because people use the VA and non-VA systems, you know, say the VA is cheaper. Um, and we know that the quality of care in the VA is is better in general than the private sector. And people might be surprised to know that the patient satisfaction in the VA is higher than in the private sector consistently for the last 10 years. Wow. It is. Very good. Rapid City, 71. Why have I had to pay $50 for my annual physical at the VA when I go to the primary care doc? Medicare would pay for it. Uh, what's happened to me? Twice, he says. That's so happened. If it's $50, he might be seeing a specialist. Um, 
because there's there's some different rules with the with the money. But it, if you let's say he had an appointment with his cardiologist, he had labs, he saw his primary care team, um, and he saw uh, maybe physical therapist or had an X-ray. That all is fifty dollars, as far as I understand it. Okay. All right. Any comments, Mike? No, I think Carrie nailed it. That's right. Rapid City, husband in the VA, uh, in a VA home, but couldn't get medi medicine for husband in Hot Springs, had to move him to Rapid City. Hot Springs wouldn't recognize the VA medicine, VA homes. Uh, Phil, I'm not quite understand, but it had to do with VA medicine and yeah. had to move to Rapid City instead of the Hot Springs nursing yeah, home. Yeah, I could take a crack at that. You know, when a person is in a nursing home, you know, usually the payer of that nursing home um, pays for the medicine. Sure. And so rather than double supply the patient with medicine, they usually try and go with one source or the other. So it might be that situation the questioner is referring to. Okay. Yep. And I had yep. to go to the VA nursing home. Right. And that, that could be a question. Like my nurses that I work with directly, they, they could help navigate some of that or they would know the people to call. If I got that question. I know that the VA uh, employs uh, the Arlington Golden Living Center nurse, yes. nursing home that I'm the medical director for, yes. and uh, that's a great nursing home. Yeah. Uh, I like the nursing homes in my town, and I also like the Arlington nursing home. And uh, but the VA has employed the Arlington nursing home to yes. take care of some of their patients. That's great. Here's a question from Rapid City, and it may not have anything to do with the VA, but it's our last question. Melanoma in the eye cannot see radioactive plaque uh, close to optic uh, nerve. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for the fluid to go down? Is it helping? What is it causing it? Does the VA help with this kind of treatment? So the person has melanoma of the eye oh. and is going to be getting radio radioactive, uh, radioactive care. They're from Rapid. Rapid so City. I, I, they need to contact their primary care team and, and maybe ask some of those questions to them that can then ask, I don't know if it would be the ophthalmologist or the, he, they might need to go to another bigger facility like Denver, mm -hmm. on the Denver VA. But the, but the VA will help yes, him absolutely. with this absolutely. situation. Cancer, we do lots of cancer care and, and we're expanding our cancer department. Do you have radiation uh, therapy in the VA? Not at this time that I'm aware of in Sioux Falls. In Sioux Falls, right. okay. So, uh, Mike, any take-home messages? Um, I think the take-home message for me is that the VA will either directly provide or get you what you need. Um, we do our best to do it close to home. And so in my time in the VA, we've purchased more and more of this care with our community partners and providers. So in that question about the melanoma of the eye, I think we would refer to Rapid City. That's close to home, find a specialist, get them there and get them treated. Um, VA will get you what you need. Um, it's just a matter of um, asking. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, any take home, Carrie? No, I, I, I'm just, I'm honored to be here. I, I'm honored to serve our veterans. Um, I love caring for them. It, it gives me a lot of pride to be uh, a part of their uh, life and help them through their, through their times of health and disease. Well, I thank you. And I thank you too, Mike. And, and thank you all for joining us on our website for the after hours portion of our program. We appreciate all of your questions and the opportunity to answer them. Remember, we'll not be here the next two Thursdays as it is Thanksgiving on the 27th. And on the 4th, South Dakota Public Broadcasting will be having their membership drive programming. But be sure to watch for Prairie Doc Perspective column in your local newspaper. Listen to our Prairie Doc Conversations radio show on a station near you. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And until next time, stay healthy out there, people. Mm -hmm.